he will go ahead and get started here. So hi, I'd like to welcome you to the IAC Acoustics Accutone 2 Medical and Life Sciences uh, webinar. My name is Jeremy Pizza, and I'm the Architectural Sales Manager here at IAC Acoustics. And today we're going to deep dive into the Accutone 2 series medical uh, enclosures. Uh, during the, the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the GoToWebinar application. And at the end, at the end of the uh, uh, webinar, I will take a look in there and answer any questions that may be in there. So before we get into the product, I do want to talk a little bit about, you know, who's IAC Acoustics, who's the Catalyst, and, and things like that. So IAC Acoustics is part of a, a group called the Catalyst Acoustics Group. They are the parent company of not only IAC Acoustics, but uh, a whole handful of uh, other noise control companies. <clears throat> and this group offers a broad portfolio of sound control solutions. And it includes acoustics, seismic, vibration, and noise control. Uh, so you may have noticed that I've used both uh, the, I've used two terms already, noise control and sound control. Um, I, most of the work that IAC Acoustics does uh, is control noise, which is exactly what the medical product line is intended to do. But there are other product lines that we have that are more about tuning the acoustics of a room rather than reducing the noise. And so what I like to think of it is, is this. So noise is your neighbor mowing their grass sound is you mowing your grass and music is your neighbor mowing your grass the point is the terms are completely subjective it really depends on the application it's the same source that you're hearing noise is more annoying sound really uh, can be viewed as not as annoying and so like it, say you're building like a studio and you're really tuning the acoustics of the room that's more sound control but if you're if your whole goal is to just get rid of uh, that source it would be considered noise right it's an annoyance that you want to get rid of so I do like to just kind of differentiate the two because we have product lines that tackle both of those uh, situations. So the ISC Acoustics Medical and Life Sciences team is consisted of three of us. At the top, we have Thomas Hines. He's the director of ISC Acoustics. Uh, he's actually been working with ISC for over 20 years. He was um, <clears throat> one of their main installers for a large part of his career. Uh, he just really has uh, exceptional product knowledge and just kind of the know-how of how all of this stuff gets put together. Um, great resource to lean on if there's ever an issue going on during an installation or anything field related. Um, you know, he kind of just he has the experience and, and the answers to you know, truthfully everything that we've, uh, that I've come across in my time here. Uh, then we have Rick Etsy. He's the architectural sales estimator. So Rick actually spent 20 years of his career working in the manufacturing facility, building this actual product. So he brings a unique, um, a unique aspect to a sales team. Usually, uh, the sales teams don't have that kind of knowledge on how the material is actually put, to, uh, put together. And so he's another great resource to lean on. Um, sometimes we get some pretty in-depth questions on how certain panels are built or doors or whatever it may be. And he's actually put that stuff together, actually welded it together. So a really good resource for us. <clears throat> then there's me, uh, Jeremy Vita, and I went to school uh, for acoustics. I got my bachelor's from Columbia College of Chicago. And I have been with IAC for just about five years now. So <clears throat> what gives IAC an advantage over the competition? There are a few things, but I know this is a short uh, webinar, so I'm only going to limit it to the, uh, the, the major ones. Otherwise, I'll talk all day about it. Uh, one of the big ones here is the in-house powder coating line. <clears throat> the reason this is a huge advantage for us is because it eliminates our need to outsource the powder coat. Uh, when you have to do that, you lengthen your lead time substantially uh, for a lot of reasons you got to think about number one uh, once the material is built you have to ship it to the powder coater so the transit time to get to their factory once it arrives there you have to kind of get in line and wait for your turn uh, to be powder coated you know say the the powder coater just started a project of say 10,000 mufflers uh, the odds of them stopping that and switching over to our product to get a door through uh, very slim odds there. Um, they're going to work on the, you know, the, the massive projects that they have, and we're just going to get, we're going to have to get in line. So that could be, they could add a lot of time to your lead time. Once it's done, um, th then you have to think about the transit time back to our factory. Uh, but the worst part is, let's say we get the stuff powder coated and it's sent back, and our quality control is inspecting the product, and they find a scratch or a bubble or whatever it may be. Uh, then we have to send it back to them, and so it just starts that whole process over again. And so it just, it really, really can 
destroy lead times. And uh, especially in today's world um, with the supply chain stuff, lead time is a, a major factor. And because we have an in-house powder coating line, it really just helps us keep our lead time as, as short as, as we can. Uh, another advantage we have is we have acoustic performance test data for all published products. Um, so anything that we actually advertise, any numbers that we advertise, we have acoustic tests to back that up and we are willing to share those with people. We don't just give them out. We don't have them on our website or anything like that. We, we do want to know why do you want to see it? You know, what's the purpose of reviewing these test reports? But we do have them. We just don't have them publicly available, but we do send them out um, most of the time when people ask for it. So uh, it, is, it is something that we can, we can provide. Uh, we also guarantee the performance of all of our products because of that test data. And so if, if you have a product in the field that just isn't performing, um, we will come out there and, and take a look at it, make sure that we can get it up to uh, the performance spec. Uh, we you have UL listings for fire and electrical. And so we have up to 90 minutes <clears throat> on a door with a wood veneer and up to 180 minutes uh, on a door without a wood veneer, uh, as well as the electrical part of it. So every uh, electrical component will have a UL listing as well as its assembly. And each electrical panel is gonna have its own individual UL tag on it. Uh, another thing that it's not listed here, but it really helps us out is uh, IAC has been around since 1949. So we have a huge library of past project templates, designs, drawings, things like that. It's actually pretty rare for us to come across an issue that hasn't been addressed previously. Uh, now it's a lot of documents, you know, and filing cabinets and things like that that we have, but we do uh, sometimes, if, if we need to, we'll start moving through and, and, and kind of find a solution that had worked previously. And so it's a, just another resource for us to lean on. And then there's this thing called the secondary submittal. Now what that is, <clears throat> the secondary submittal is during the manufacturing process, once this, uh, say you have a door, for example, once the door is ready to go um, and, and they're ready to start creating it and, and all that stuff, what they're gonna do is you can see this picture on the left, you can see that door is still hanging in the rack. So they actually take a picture of the door in the open and in the closed position while it's still hanging in the rack. And the reason they do this is to show that all the reveals across the jams, across the head uh, it, it are uh, within our spec. They do it to show that all the seals and everything like that are, are touching and, and doing what they should. This isn't necessarily to, you know, this thing shows up in field and, and the hinge got shifted during transit or something like that. This isn't to use these pictures to say, no, no, look, it was good when we when we shipped it out. Uh, it's just that more there to, to help you, right? So, like, if if something got shifted during transit, um, maybe the truck driver didn't mention that they, uh, you know, they hit something or, or something like that. This really just provides not only us, the manufacturer, but you, the customer, a little bit more ammunition. So if you need to do freight claims or whatever it may be, uh, but they do this for every single door that comes through the factory. So just another uh, you know, aspect that, that IAC does that our competitors, not all of them will do. And so again, just another advantage uh, that we do have. So enough about all that stuff though. Let's actually talk about what you all came here to, uh, to see. And that is the Accutone 2 Medical and Life Sciences product. Uh, the motto here that we have is uh, any size, any shape, any color with no exposed fasteners. Um, and that, that is true. Any size, we've built uh, obviously squares and rectangles, but we've also built, you know, triangle booths. We've built actual spheres. Um, so we do any, any uh, shape. We've built huge buildings, uh, a lot of security work. So, you know, any size, we've built, you know, 50 by 50 foot enclosures that are two stories. Uh, any color, if you have an RAL number that you want, even if it's not one of our standard colors, send us the RAL number and we can match it and paint it whatever color you want. And then the no exposed fastener. So the way this thing is designed, the way it's designed to go together is to not show any of the screws. All the screws are hidden. Um, and that's done using a few different methods that we can get into if you'd like. Um, I'm not going to do it right now just because it'll take a little bit of time to explain. But you can see on these pictures that there really are no exposed fasteners. Uh, some other co companies will just put screws everywhere to hold the thing together and while it works it just doesn't look as good the whole idea here is to make it be aesthetically pleasing and that's why we uh, have the no exposed fasteners so this is the two uh, the 252 and 254 mini booths 
Uh, they are designed to allow flexibility in any environment, and they actually have two doors on them. So there's a, a, a right hand and a left hand door. You can see in that picture on the left. The reason for that is you can you can make it a right or a left hand configuration um, depending on what your situation is. You know, depending on where you're putting it in your in your space. So there's actually a little clasp on each side of that booth. So whatever door you decide not to use, you can actually just lock it using this clasp on the top. And you can see, if you look at this picture on the left, the right door, you'll notice there's actually a fabric panel that's sitting on that door. The reason for that is we send one of those for every mini booth. Reason is you put that on the door that you're not gonna have in use. That way, when you're inside the booth, it really doesn't even look like a door. It just, you see the fabric panel there and it just looks like another wall panel. Um, so that's that's how we are able to accomplish that. All these booths are situated atop casters for uh, to allow for mobility and uh, you know ease of placement use. However, if structure borne noise is a concern of yours, we can use um, vibration isolators in lieu of those casters. And we actually assemble all these booths in our factory, so they actually ship out fully assembled, ready for infield placement. Uh, as you can see on this picture on the right. Those booths are not shrink wrapped yet, obviously, um, but that is them sitting on their crate, ready to get shrink wrapped and, and shipped out. So that's how they leave fully assembled and ready to go. And we do try to keep um, quantity five of each, 252 and 254 in stock. Reason for that is uh, when these thing, you know, when an order is placed on these, we want to be able to ship them out within a couple of days. So that's why we do that. Uh, if there's an order that's placed that needs like 20 of these, obviously we don't have 20 in stock. But the lead time is only about two to three weeks, depending on the quantity. So it's a pretty uh, quick turnaround on the mini booths. Now, these are the classic audiometric booth series. You got the 40A series, which is our single wall, the 800A series, which is our enhanced single wall, and the 120A series, which is our double wall. So the 40A series is a four inch thick single wall construction. Um, we use what we call a noise lock five panel, and that gets us an NIC 50 uh, for the entire enclosure put together. Uh, there's an SDC 51 door on there, um, and there's actually, if you look at the brochure, you'll notice something on there called standard sizes. Uh, there's actually 18 on the 40A series. I put that word in quotations because I really am not a big fan of that, that word choice. The reason I say that is, remember the motto here, any size is the first part of it. Um, so I don't like to call them standards. I like to call them starting points, rather. So if one of those quote unquote standard sizes works perfect for you, that's fine, we'll build it at that size. But if you need to adjust those dimensions and, you know, in any direction, no matter how much you need to adjust the dimensions off of one of those, again, quote unquote standard sizes, it doesn't bother us at all. It actually, it doesn't increase the price specifically because you're getting off of a standard size. Obviously, if you grow the room in dimensions, that will increase the price, but there isn't a price increase because you're moving off of one of those sizes. I just like to call it out from the start because I have seen people get a little bit nervous when they're moving away from uh, what's listed on that brochure because they, they just have the assumption that the price will go up because of that. That's not the case. So there is an option to add a one inch interior enhancement package to this booth. Uh, that'll give you a three point jump on your NIC rating. Um, and really what it is, is you have a fabric panel that'll get added to the inside as well as a liner panel. I have another slide that goes into the enhancement package coming up here. Um, but that one inch enhancement gives you a three point jump on the NIC scale. This is the 800A series. Um, so this gets you an NIC 60 performance. And really what it is, is you got your four inch wall panel and then you include a four inch interior enhancement package. So it's actually an eight inch thick wall construction. Um, and again, it's that metal liner panel, that fabric panel, and there is a chair rail there that covers the joint between the two. But again, I'll, I'll show you that on a different slide coming up here. We actually increased the door from an STC 51 to an STC 61. It's actually a three and a half inch thick door and the actual wall panel construction increases as well to a noise lock seven is what we call it. So again, all this will get you an NIC 60. And here is the 120A series. This is our, our double wall construction. You have two four inch thick panels with a four inch airspace in between. So it gets you a, a total 12 inch thick uh, wall system. And we have two doors on this one. This is uh, two STC 51 doors that we're using. You can see right now there's an in-swing and an out-swing door. That is the standard that we use, but we do have a couple of different options. One, you can do a tandem out-swing door, which uh, all that means is 
both of those doors are going to swing out. And so the way that works is there's a little mechanism that we install on those doors that connects the two the inner and the outer door. So that when you pull the outer door, the inner one's going to swing with it. So you really only have, only have to open one door. Um, a lot of people like to go that route just so they don't have to open one door and then go push the other one open. It's just you, you open one and the whole thing opens with it. Another option we do have is to uh, install a five inch thick STC 50, uh, 64 door in lieu of these two 51s. Now, that's not a very popular option. Reason being is that door is, again, five inches thick. It's very heavy. It'll get you the same performance, um, but it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to use. But sometimes people uh, do like to go that route. Um, so just put it out there, it is another option. Uh, but yeah, this is the, uh, the double wall booth that we have, NIC 70. So the next, uh, the next is what we have, what we call the ACT series suites, audio metric control test. Um, so each suite will have a control room and an exam room. And so there's five different uh, models you can choose from for this series. You have the 40 ACT, 800 ACT, 120, 140, and 160 ACT. So again, just like the single wall booth that we were talking about, here's the single wall suite. So it's a 40 ACT series. You have the single wall control, uh, single wall exam room, and it's extremely similar, like I said, to the 40A. All the information is pretty much the same, uh, but one thing to note is that they are independent rooms. So you can see, if you look at that, that sketch, there's nothing that's actually attaching these two rooms together. Uh, what we will do is provide a closure plate that on the front side of this wall will cover up that gap so that you know when you're walking into the booth, you don't just see a, a four inch airspace there. Other than that though, these are completely independent rooms from each other. Um, you do have the viewing window so that your audiologist or, or the doctor, whoever it may be, can look through that viewing window and see the patient on the other side. Um, but besides that, there really isn't much uh, connecting these two. Uh, there is an option if you want to share the wall between the control and exam room. Uh, a couple of reasons people do that. One is if they need to limit the footprint that this suite is having on their host site, say they don't have a lot of room there. Uh, if you share that wall, you're actually going to be getting rid of eight inches <clears throat> on your footprint because you have a four inch wall and a four inch airspace. Uh, also, by sharing the wall, you uh, you can save a little bit of cost because, again, you're just getting rid of an entire wall of panels and a window. So it'll be a little bit of cost savings there. Um, and another reason people uh, do it is, let's say they don't really care so much about the performance room to room. All they really care about is uh, interior to exterior. Well, when you get rid of that wall in the airspace, you're decreasing the performance room to room. Um, so if it's something that you just, you know, that's not your concern, then that's another another reason that people like to share that wall. This is the 800 ACT series. And the only difference here between the other one we just talked about is that exam room is gonna be turned into the, the 800 uh, A part of it that we discussed earlier. So again, it's gonna have its four inch thick interior enhancement package. Um, so you'll get an NIC 50 out of your control room and an NIC 60 out of your exam room. So the 120 ACT is a little bit different. The reason I say that is these are actually integrated into one another. Um, so the entire booth itself is is connected. The other two we just looked at, those are completely independent from each other. These ones are integrated. You can see it's really just two single wall rooms with a uh, perimeter wall built around it uh, with a couple extra doors. So each room here is going to get you NIC 70 as well as the room to room performance. You'll have NIC 70 because it's the same construction. You got those two four inch thick walls there uh, with a four inch airspace. So this is by far the most popular model right here. It's the 140 ACT. The reason it's popular is because you have NIC 50 in the control room. It's just good enough you know, for the audiologist to sit. They don't need the maximum performance there. But they have the NIC 70 in the exam room. That's where they want the performance. That's where it needs to be you know, extremely quiet. They don't want any interference in there. So this is definitely the most popular that we have. You can see here, these are also integrated into one another. Um, they're not independent booths, they're integrated into one suite. Uh, but again, NIC 50 uh, single wall control room, NIC 70 double wall exam room. Now this one is a little bit different. Um, it's actually, I'll switch back and forth a couple of times so you can see the difference. The only thing we did here is to actually get to a 140 ACT, we, we took a 160 ACT and shared one of the center walls. That's the only difference between the two. 
you can see again, if I fast switch back and forth, all we did was just remove one of those inner walls and integrate the two booths into one another. Um, some people do like the 160 ACT because it has the three walls and two air spaces between the two rooms. So if they're say, you know, in a studio, studio setting, <clears throat> if they're trying to record uh, music in that test room or, or whatever they're trying to do in there, uh, that's a good reason why they might want just an extreme amount of performance between the rooms. Um, other than that, there's really not a lot of reason that people go with the 160. They usually just stick with the 140 ACT here. Uh, but it is good to know that that is something we can offer if that uh, if that high room to room performance ever is uh, something that you need. Now I like to put this picture in here because it illustrates the high capabilities that IAC has. Uh, we buy our stock steel in 12 foot lengths, um, which is why an increase in the height doesn't really have a major impact on cost. You know, if you're going from eight foot inside height to 10 foot, all we're doing is cutting off less material, and so your your cost doesn't really go up that much because of that. Um, so it's one thing to keep in mind. So at 12, we can go to 12 feet very, very easily. Um, we can also go uh, taller than 12 feet if you need to. Uh, the way we do that is we start to stagger wall panels and we include structural supports. Like I said earlier, we've built you know, 50 foot by 50 foot two-story buildings, um, like security enclosures. So we can absolutely accomplish it, uh, but it does get a little bit more complicated, a little bit more expensive. Usually in the medical and life sciences uh, world, we're not really having to do that, but it is something to note that we can go above uh, 12 feet if you need to. So these are the multi-person testing suites that we have. You have just your 40M series single wall and your 120M series double wall. Um, and so what's gonna take place here is you will have a master jack plate on that front wall, uh, either side of the door, doesn't matter where, you'll have a master jack there and then in front of each of those those circles that you see, those are stools there. In front of each stool, you're going to have a station jack plate. And all those station jack plates are going to run right to the master jack plate so that um, whoever's running the equipment there is just dealing with that one master jack plate. And it'll run everything to the station plates as they need it to. Uh, each station plate is going to have uh, quantity three quarter inch jacks. And then the master jack plate will have enough quarter inch jacks to cover each of the station plates. Uh, we can do custom jack plates if you want. Um, we have a, a manufacturer that's local to us. Um, so if you need more than just a three quarter inch, if you need XLRs or you know nine pin or VGA or HDMI, whatever it is that you need, we can absolutely accommodate that. All we need to know is what kind of connections you need and how many. Uh, and then we can get a custom uh, jack plate installed for you. So here's the enhancement package that I uh, have talked about uh, a few times now. <clears throat> so you can see, uh, we have a few different options for the color of the panels, the carpet, and the fabric panels. So there's a lot of different things you can do here to kind of just make your booth look different. Um, picture on the left here demonstrates what the enhancement package actually looks like. So you have your metal liner panel on the bottom, your fabric wrap panel on the top, and then we include a chair rail to cover the joint between the two. Um, sometimes people will go with a full length fabric panel, which really just means floor to ceiling. So they're just removing that that liner panel from it. Uh, that, there's a couple of reasons they do that. One, it adds a little bit more absorption to the room than that than having that liner panel there. Or, or two, they just like to look better. They don't want to have this this uh, these two different kinds of panels in there. So they just go full fabric uh, all the way. Uh, but there's a lot we can do here. So this is just this is a very quick snippet of our enhancement packages. I do have more pictures um, and demonstrations I can show you. If you'd like, they're not in this presentation, but at the end of the presentation, I'll put my email, my cell phone up. <clears throat> Feel free to jot that down and uh, reach out to me and I can get you some more information on the enhancement package itself. <clears throat> so now you're a little bit familiar with the different models of performances that we have. So a couple of questions you wanna think about here, um, design considerations, if you will. Uh, the obvious two that you need to start with are your desired performance and your desired booth model. So first thing is performance. Is our single wall booth going to be sufficient or do you need to go to the uh, enhanced single wall, right? Or is a double wall something that you're going to need? So you need to think through that. And if you have questions on how to come to a solution there, certainly reach out to me. I can help you out. Um, I can even put you in touch with some acoustic consultants that can help you out as well. Um, also, the model. Do you need just that single booth or do you need the, to have the control room and the uh, exam room? It says live suites there. Uh, that, that, that means exam or test room. So those are the first two questions you need to answer on the uh, design part of this. 
Next, you need to think about, do you have any <clears throat> host facility constraints, such as the host room height? Um, if, you know, if there's, is there a support column in the way? Whatever it may be. So if there is a support column in the way, we can absolutely accommodate that. What we do is we jog around that column is what we call it. So we'll pretty much just create an inside corner of the booth um, and, and just kind of go around that column. Um, for the height, you know, we can we can shrink the booth if we need to. We can shrink the floor if we need to. There's a lot of different things we can do to help alleviate that issue as well. Uh, so just talk to us about it. Let us know what the maximum height the booth can be is, and we'll we'll go from there. One aspect that I see that's missed quite frequently is if there are any local, state, or federal uh, requirements. Example of that is, uh, does the booth need to be ADA compliant? In this world, the medical and life sciences world, ADA compliance is massive. Uh, if this is going into a clinic or a hospital or whatever it's going into, odds are it's going to have to be ADA compliant. There are a lot of things we can do to help you achieve that ADA compliance. Now, let me just be clear. There's a lot we can do to help you achieve it. I'm not going to go out and say this, that we are going to get you ADA compliant because there's a lot more involved in ADA compliance than just our booth. But there's a lot we can do to help you out there. The biggest thing for our booth that, that you have to tackle with ADA compliance is the step up into our room. So the standard floor system that we have is a six and an eighth inch step up into that room. Obviously, that is not ADA compliant, uh, but we do have numerous different options for low profile options. Uh, we can go from no floor at all. Uh, we can go to a half inch floor all the way up to our six and an eighth inch floor. And so there's a lot we can do to help you there. You know, if you're installing it into a pit, uh, then go with the standard floor. It's perfect. If you can't do a pit and you don't have a lot of room to build a ramp, uh, then talk to us and we can certainly help you out and get you closer to ADA compliance. Um, so again, I, I, could, I have details on all of the different floors that we have. So if you're curious on seeing the actual drawing of that floor, uh, of a specific floor, let me know, reach out to me and I can, I can get in touch with you and, and uh, send you the stuff. Then you want to think about what kind of electrical you need. Uh, what comes standard is a duplex outlet and a toggle switch for the lights, also a toggle switch for the fans. Um, but you know, we can add quad receptacles, uh, dimmer switches for the lights. Uh, we could do empty electrical boxes where you could install a data drop, uh, a phone drop, a fire strobe, a thermostat. We've seen like panic buttons, um, speakers, you know, whatever it may be, we can install those and recess those, those drops for you inside of our panel. We won't actually install the data, the phone, the fire strobes, the thermostats, or whatever it may be but we'll prep that drop for you. So you'll have your electrical box with your conduit stubbing up the roof. So all you'll have to do is get your electrical contractor in there to fish those wires through and install the actual circuitry itself. Uh, but for the duplex receptacles, the quad receptacles, uh, the toggle switches, the light fixtures, and the fans, we will install and wire all that stuff uh, in our factory for you. But the additional options, we, we won't. So something to keep in mind. And again, uh, the the jack plate here. So um, on our standard, just like 40A series booths, um, we have our jack plate that has uh, 12 quarter inch jacks, two USB and one two inch pass through as a standard. Uh, but again, like I was talking about with our, our multi-person rooms, we have a manufacturer that can custom make these for us. So if you need the XLRs or you need additional USB or you need a, a nine pin or whatever it may be, uh, just let us know and, and we can get a custom uh, jack plate installed in that panel for you. So that is actually all I have for you today. Uh, but yeah, if there's any questions, certainly type them into the question box on this application and I'm happy to discuss. Uh, if there's no questions that you can think of right now, feel free to jot down my email and my cell phone number. And if you come up with any questions in the future, certainly give me a call. I'd be uh, very happy to talk about any any of the projects that you're up against. So one question is, what size pass-throughs are available? So good question. Uh, we have three standard pass-through sleeves that we use. It's two inch, three inch, and four inch interior diameter. Um, and that's built out of a PVC pipe. It just goes right through the wall and we include a bunch of fill that you can stuff into that pipe and there's caps on it too. So it actually does, it, it doesn't really affect your performance. You'll still be able to test out uh, with that pass-through. Um, we, we have done custom size pass-throughs. You know, we've gone up to uh, six inches before. That was a really, really big one. 
Um, at that point, acoustics really wasn't their concern. They just needed to pass a lot of cables through. Uh, but just something to note that we can go larger than four inches if we need to, but two, two inch, three inch, four inch are our standards. Another one here is for the ACT suites, do you cover the gap between the two rooms? Yeah, so like I was saying, um, let me go back a little bit. So the question is, if, if you look, uh, let me go to a better one uh, right here. So the two walls in between these rooms here, you can see there's a four inch airspace uh, in between there. The question really is, do we cover that gap or is there just gonna be a four inch gap uh, between those two booths which is visible? So we do, we will provide you with a closure plate that'll cover that four inch gap there. So you can't, you won't even be able to tell there's a gap. Um, that comes as a standard with this kind of suite. What What is an additional option is closure plates for the side walls and for the roof. So if you wanna tie this booth off into your host facility, kind of make it look like it's part of the building, not just a piece of furniture that was dropped in there. We can provide you closure plates that attach to this each side wall of your booth and they go all the way to the host wall. And then we can also give you one that attaches to the roof of your booth and it goes all the way up to the plenum or, or the, the bottom side of your ceiling. And that way, again, it just looks a little nicer. It looks like it's part of the building and not just something that was dropped in after the fact. So one thing here is uh, people are talking about uh, sprinklers inside the booth. So that is a big, a big one that we're dealing with uh, right now. So what we do with the sprinklers is everyone wants us to pre-drill the holes for those sprinklers, but we can't do that. The reason we can't do that is there is a floating septum inside of our roof panel. Uh, it's it literally floating. And so we can't pre-drill it because if that septum shifts at all during transit, your hole is not going to line up and then you have to re-drill it. Now you got a random hole inside of a roof panel. doesn't make a lot of sense acoustically speaking. So what we do is when our contractor is installing this booth for you, all you got to do is tell them where uh, you where you want the hole to be and he'll drill that hole for you. And then what we do is we provide you details and instructions on how to actually dress that penetration of the sprinkler head coming through. We don't install the sprinkler heads or the piping. We are not fire contractors, so we're, we can't do that. Um, so you have to get your fire contractor in there to actually install the piping and the sprinkler head. But we will give you instructions and details on how to dress that penetration so that it keeps the acoustics um, what, what they need to be. How long is the warranty if the booths are on with IAC? So if IAC installs the booth, uh, the standard warranty is one year from the date of substantial completion. Um, so once we get sign off from you that everything looks good, it'll be one year from that date. Uh, if the booths are not installed by IAC, it'll be one year from the date that we ship that material to you. So one year is the standard uh, standard warranty that we have. But again, what changes is if we install it, it's one year from when when we finish it. If if you install it, it's one year from when we ship to you. Uh, so I want to thank you all for attending the IAC Acoustics Acuturn 2 Medical Life Sciences webinar. I know your time is valuable and I really do appreciate you spending some of it with me here today. Uh, if you would like a copy of this presentation or would like to discuss a product or a project, please contact me at your convenience. Also, take a look at the IAC Acoustics uh, YouTube channel. We have a lot of informational digital you know videos about most of our product there. So thank you so much again, and I hope you all have a great day.